Welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List, and this is your complete guide to the city of Malmo. Where to explore, what to do, how to eat some bugs and spiders, and how to have an amazing time when you're visiting this lovely southern Swedish city. Welcome to the third largest city in Sweden. It's an incredibly quirky city full of historical sites, modern architecture, and some very, very strange things in between. The one thing you'll notice about Malmo is that it's very clean and very green. It's one of the greenest cities that I've ever been to. But it's not just about parks. There's plenty of cool, quirky things to do here, so let me show you around the place. Firstly though, how to get here. Even though Malmo does have its own international airport, most people fly into Copenhagen International and take a short 20 minute train from Denmark to Malmo. You'll probably arrive here at Malmo Central Station. You can get to pretty much anywhere in Sweden or any other of the Scandinavian countries from here. But let's wander down the street and visit the most famous attraction in all of Malmo. Malmo Castle. From the outside, it just looks like an old building with two red huts. But surprisingly, this is quite a fortified castle. It's surrounded by this giant moat, and in the middle is the actual castle bit itself. I gotta say that Malmo Castle is possibly the most random castle that I've ever been to in my life, and I've been to a lot. Yes, there's a specific bit of the castle where you can explore the castle remparts, learn about the history of the castle, explore all the military stuff, these red huts right here, they're fortress bastions. You can explore the interior of the castle, where the king used to sleep and work, etc. It's all very, very interesting. But it's not just a castle, it's also a historic museum that you can learn about the history of the city. But it's also an art gallery, where you can spend some time looking at famous pieces of art. But it's also a fashion museum. Currently, they've got an exhibit dedicated to Muslim fashion, rather randomly. But it's also a church. You can have services right here. But it's also a natural history museum, kind of like the one in London, albeit a lot smaller. But it's also an aquarium, where you can see jellyfish and frogs and snakes. God, I hate snakes. But it's also an architecture exhibit, so there is a lot to see in this castle. And given that the entry fee is roughly about three pounds, it's definitely value for money. If I'd known how much was in here, I probably would have done Malmo Castle at the beginning of the day, rather than an hour before closing time. Because with your admission to Malmo Castle, it also allows you access to the technology museum across the street. Obviously, I ran out of time before I could actually go inside, but maybe the next time I'm in Malmo, I'll definitely visit. Right next to the Technology Museum, you'll find this fishing harbour, full of these quaint little fishing houses and this rather cool fish market. So if you're in the mood for some freshly caught fish, you can get it literally right here. Not that you would as a tourist, but maybe some of you might be interested. I mentioned earlier in the video that Malmo is an incredibly green city and the area around Malmo Castle is surrounded by parks. Most notably, Slotstrad Garden, that's a beautiful botanical garden that you can walk through, especially on a nice day like today. It also has its own windmill, very, very Dutch, even though we're in Sweden. And it also has a river running through it. It's a nice lookout point to sit back and contemplate life. Slotstrad Garden is definitely worth exploring just to look at the flowers or just to relax a little bit. Across the way, you'll find Kungsparken, aka the King's Park. This one's a lot more foresty, there's definitely a lot more trees around here, but it's no less spectacular. There's also a casino nearby, not sure if this is an actual casino or not or whether or not it's just called that, but this whole area is definitely worth exploring especially if you've got a bit of time to kill. Literally across the street, you'll come to the area known as Centrum, aka the city centre. As soon as you step in, things are a lot different. 
you can tell from the street art on the buildings and on the walls, and the architecture is totally different to what you've just experienced at Malmo Castle. And when you're walking the streets, it's an interesting mixture of incredibly modern buildings mixed with very traditional Swedish architecture. Take this place for example, Lila Torg. It's like a little town square and you'll marvel at some of the architecture here. The buildings are very lovely, some look very very Tudor-esque. The quaint little shops here sell various stereotypical Swedish goods, clogs, horses, scarves, that sort of thing. And I particularly like this well, which I assumed it used to be the town's water supply. And it's pretty cool that they've kept this running and intact. Right next door to that, you'll find the biggest town square in the city. This is the Torriet. Complete with these very colonial buildings, this statue of the king, and it's also home to Malmo Town Hall. It's a very impressive looking building. It looks fantastic from the outside. I'm pretty sure that it's not a tourist attraction so you can't really go inside, but it definitely is worth exploring when you're out here. And for some reason they're flying the flag of Australia in and amongst these flags of Sweden. Hmm, interesting. But the square itself is actually very lovely and it's definitely worth exploring. One street away, you'll find the largest church in the city. This is St. Peter's. From the outside, it does look pretty impressive. On the inside, you'll find that it's very, very, um, it's very white. You'll notice that all of the churches, especially around the Scandi countries, tend to paint their walls bright white. I quite like that. It makes them look very light and airy. I particularly like the modern style organ pipes mixed in with the ancient tombs. And there's a lot of ancient tombs in here. If you're a fan of the traditional churches, this one might seem a little bit boring. The more interesting thing is right at the back, where they have the original medieval paintings. But as it's a free of charge attraction, you'd be silly to not spend at least five minutes just to explore. Whilst you're around Centrum actually, have a walk around the streets, because you'll find some of the most varied buildings that you'll see in any one city. It's like planning permission doesn't exist here, they'll just build anything anywhere. That's especially true of this monstrosity right here, the Museum of Modern Art. I'm not a big art fan so I never went in, but it's definitely there if you like that sort of thing. But walk back along the river and you'll eventually come across Gustav Adolf's Torg. It's another public square, but this time round you'll probably find shops and amenities that are more familiar to what you're used to back at home. Whilst you're here, take the bridge across the river, where you'll notice these rather interesting shoe sculptures. I'm pretty sure these are the shoes of various famous people that are either from Malmo or Sweden, and it's pretty cool to actually walk along and see if you recognize any of the names. As soon as you cross the bridge, you'll come across one of the most interesting museums you'll ever see, the Disgusting Food Museum. As the name implies, it's a museum dedicated to the most disgusting food on the planet. Given that I'm British and also Chinese, quite a lot of this stuff I didn't find particularly weird at all. Frogs, yep, yeah, we eat that. Pufferfish, yep, yeah, that's normal. Bats and insects, yeah, no problem. It's pretty cool to see what some of the weirdest food on the planet actually looks like. There's even sections where you can smell some of the stuff, and boy, some of this stuff really stinks. At the end of your museum tour, you actually get to try some of these things. Like I said, I'm used to eating most of this stuff anyway, the only two things I really didn't like is this rancid brand of Swedish cheese and Hakal, aka fermented shark meat that tastes like urine. I managed to complete the challenge, but boy, the chili section was fairly unpleasant. 11 days since last vomit, with 338 total vomiters. Wow, impressive. Once you've finished eating disgusting food, you'll realize you're in the most modern bit of the city of Malmo complete with modern shops, modern streets, and even this giant mega shopping complex called the Triangle. It's so big, it has its own train station. Right next door, you'll find the other most famous church in the city. This is St. Johannes' Church. 
From the outside, it looks very impressive, and from the inside, well, it looks very similar to the other one. It's definitely a lot smaller, but definitely worth exploring. And once again, it's free of charge to enter. At this point, you'll probably cross over to the district of Moulavonian. Again, the buildings are definitely very different, massively varied, there's a pretty cool statue here, and it definitely seems a lot more laid back. It's definitely worth a few minutes to explore, especially on a nice day like today. If you're after a bit of culture, the Malmo Opera House and the Malmo Concert Hall are literally right across the street from each other, right here on the main road. Across the map, you'll also find another giant park space, Pilsdam Sparken, with this beautiful lake and interesting architecture. And it's at this point you'll also come across all of the sporting facilities. So if you're into sports, Svedbank Stadion is the main stadium here in Malmo that's home to the professional football team. There's also an athletics track nearby, and it's also next to Malmo Arena, which is the home venue of the city's beloved ice hockey team, the Malmo Redhawks. If you get a chance to catch a game, it does come highly recommended, because the atmosphere here is always very, very good. The attractions I've mentioned so far are the must-see and do things if you have a short time here in Malmo. If you've got a little bit more time, travel to the north part of the city, where you'll find this industrial area and the harbour. It's very interesting to walk around, there's some very interesting named buildings, this one rather unfortunately named the World Trade Center, but it's also home to possibly Sweden's most famous building, the Turning Torso. It's the only building in the world that's rotated 90 degrees, and from a distance it looks pretty amazing, and from underneath it looks absolutely towering. But the one thing they don't tell you is that this is a residential complex, you can't actually go inside. Apparently they do tours of the place at various times of the year, but they are incredibly rare. I definitely would have loved to have gone up this particular tower just to say that I've been up it, but standing underneath it, that's good enough for me. If I get bored, hey, I can at least have plastic surgery across the street. If you're a fan of the big outdoors, you're spoiled for choice pretty much here in Malmo. If it's nice like it is today, you can explore Malmo Beach. The last thing I would recommend, if you have the time and aren't shy, is visit the Riebischbohr Kalbauthus. This is the public open air bath, where you can blast open your pores in a hot wooden sauna, and then dive straight into the freezing cold sea to cool off. It's meant to be very good for you, but the one thing they don't tell you is that everyone in here, male and female, is completely nude. The Swedes, they have a liberal attitude to nudity, and pretty much everything is co-ed. So if you want to spend some time naked in a wooden box full of sweaty Swedes, this is definitely the place for you. Fun times. Overall guys, a trip to Malmo is definitely worth it, especially if you're doing a tour of Sweden, or if you're visiting nearby Copenhagen. Check out my other video to see what that's like. Ok Nin, I'm sold, what do I need to do? Well, you need to come here to Malmo. As earlier mentioned in the video, Malmo has its own international airport, but most people fly into Copenhagen International and literally take a 20 minute train to Malmo Central train station. When you're in the city of Malmo, you don't actually need public transport, everything is pretty much walkable. But if you do need public transport, the bus network is vast and varied, and you'll have no problem navigating the buses to get you around the city. The cost? Well, the attractions are incredibly reasonable. It's no different to any other European city, and in the case of Malmo Castle, definitely value for money. But quite a lot of the things in Malmo are free to visit anyway, especially when it comes to things outdoors. So most of the time you'll be visiting things like parks, exploring the sculptures, having a look at the architecture, all of that is pretty much free of charge. If you're looking for a place to stay, I recommend staying somewhere near Malmo Central Station, Centrum or just north of Malmo Castle. And the hotel prices are quite reasonable here. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes. Contactless payments have become the de facto way of paying for goods and services here in Sweden. You could come here without a cent of Swedish krona 
And so long as you have a contactless credit or debit card, you'll be absolutely fine. Sweden takes its recycling very seriously. And if you buy drinks that come in glass or plastic containers, you'll be charged a small deposit fee. You'll get this deposit fee back once you dispose of your containers in one of the many machines across the city, which I never bothered to do. And finally, whilst the official language here is Swedish, most Swedish people speak Swedish and English bilingually. So if you're an English speaker, you'll be absolutely fine. But you'll also find the locals speaking French, German, Danish, Finnish, Norwegian, so, so long as you speak any Western language, you'll probably be fine here in Malmo. If you have enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on the comment section below. And if you've got any other bucket list ideas you want me to make a video about, tweet them at me. And if I get enough of these suggestions, I'll probably go and make a video about it. But guys, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. No, I've not tried one of these yet. Salty licorice. Is this from Finland? Uh oh. Mm -hmm. That's very salty. So the baby goat drinks the milk, then it's uh -huh. killed right away, and the cheese is made inside the stomach. Yay! <laughs> Looking at that sign there, 11 days since last vomit. Really? Oh, that's actually the biggest number I've ever seen. Oh my god, 3,038 vomits. 3,038. 338. 338. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I always mix them. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was fun. Thank you. I hope you had fun. Yeah. yeah.